All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are at poor day today. We have our two sections set up behind me. The truck should be here any minute. And my dad just got here with the tool trailer and got the screed set up. So we have eight yards coming. We have two 32 foot wide by seven and seven foot, 10 inch pieces here, about five inches thick. So I have our wire down temporarily, but we'll have to put it in as we go because the truck won't likely make it underneath of our power cable here. So. I'll have to use the skid steer to get most of it in, but that should be pretty quick. No big deal there. We could shoot it if we needed to, but no use worrying about that. And then the other thing I wanted to do was, I'm gonna to try to tie in my border on this side with our edges here, as well as our false joints. So we'll see how things go there. I kind of have some ideas, but I'm still kind of uh, up in the air, but really I think I'm just gonna do, instead of one false joint, I'm gonna do two about eight inches apart and then we'll stain the borders that way we get a nice grid of black uh, border and then I also got the slate the Solomon slate integral color this same 920 gray so should should match a little bit uh, we'll start oh, still only doing a broom finish no stamp but uh, it'll give it a little bit better look up against the gray on the house and the other sidewalk so uh, truck should be here any minute and I will catch up with you guys then all right trucks here just getting lined up. Ready to go.
guys good? Oh, sorry, I, I forgot it from the other side. This is four inches back? Yeah. Can you help me snap this line before you, uh, before you go? Oh, I'm not hitting that. Am I? Okay. I'm good. I just put your finger down and I'll snap it. Beautiful. Yeah, I think I see a line there. It got it a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, I guess. That'd be good. Okay, so all we're going to have to do is try to clean up these false joints in the middle. Yeah, I figured we'd have to lean out and get those, so that's okay. I'm gonna have to do this up bottom one again too with that one tie because uh well yeah just because I had to drive through it. Okay. 
probably just have to take a steel crown and like clean that up a little bit on top there. Yeah, we can manage that. That's getting good. That's how it goes. That looks nice. Oh yeah, just go through the joints. Do it one more time. And put some pressure on your right side. There you go. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, well, that is a wrap. So we got just finished brooming, cleaned up. So we ended up doing uh, like a double false joint in the middle. So that'll be what I stain for, uh, for the border. So the edge border, we have a standard edging border that's six inches. So that's the same as all my patios around the edge, six inches there. Uh, we did, we measured and did four inches on the front because when we pour the next, set a pad here it'll be four inches and then it'll be eight inches so it'll match our horizontals going across because I think I mentioned before if I did um, the screed this way with the false joiner on the side that gave us eight inches eight inch wide joint there so our edges our edging joints will be six inches wide we have eight inches wide horizontally and then we did one six inch wide here and we'll do a six inch on the other side so we'll have 12 inch so <laughs> a lot of different thicknesses um when i was originally planning it i was wanting to do kind of similar sizing but uh it just worked out differently but so we'll have a 12 inch on the verticals going in the center six inches on the edge eight inches across the front but i think it'll still look great with uh once i get it stained and uh, a couple days from now we will have this section and this section poured, so another eight yards to come. Uh, we wet set our rebar on these because I didn't want to drill in to that green concrete. It was just too much of a risk of popping the surface. So I know it's a more of a pain to get the boards off, but uh, a little bit less risky in my opinion. So this will be a slate gray Solomon 920 integral color, just like this. So you get that medium gray base color and I think that'll just tie everything in. The reason we did it here is because of the, the patio. We already had the integral color in there for the stamp work. So yeah, that'll be good. We'll uh, get these last two sections poured and get it stained. And then uh, really should start to look like something really, I think it'll dress it up. So I will catch up with you guys for four day number two. All right, welcome back for day two. So it's been, I think two days now. So the earliest I could get second truck was today. So I did some prep work in my free time here. So I have the expansion joint already screwed to the sides. I put some plaques stuff down just so we can screed a little bit easier and not have to worry about getting all the wet concrete on the new stuff. It just it does come off, but it's kind of a pain and a little bit extra work. So try to avoid it if I can. I have our wire cut and ready to go down. Um, the plan for this one, hopefully we can get the truck to kind of straddle this final form here. If he can get up this far, he should be able to shoot most of this over here. Might have a little bit of pulling, but um, I don't want to necessarily use the skid steer for this one because we have the rebar sticking out now and it's going to be pretty tight in there. But if I have to, I will. I just really don't want to hit that because it obviously could pop the top of the concrete off. So kind of a risk, but definitely uh, needed if it's necessary because I don't want to do all that extra labor. So truck should be here any minute. Uh, my dad just showed up. So we're going to get this ready to go and wait for the truck.
That works, Gary. I think it'll work. Yeah, you might have to pull it a little bit. I can handle that. Yeah, I can handle that too. Whatever you think. That does look pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I'll work with that. That looks good, Gary. Hey Matt, you see that cement truck?
In the trailer. Something there, huh? I hope nobody. But you never know. As much as we can keep off, that's just less work to fix the edge. Nice. Just throw it down here. I'll get it tomorrow or something. Just put your yeah, put your finger there and then do the, to my dad's side. Yeah, snap it real hard and make sure there's a good line there. There you go. And I'll get this side. Yep, just and hold that line there, Bob, and I'll snap this side. Perfect. That'll work. Beautiful. Yep. I don't know, it's too tight. Get me a wet trowel. You want one? What is going on with this concrete? Yeah, if it's ready. Um, when you're done with that one, come take me back over here and do this side so we can work our way back. Yep. As soon as I get through this joint, I'll come back up there. Yeah, good enough. I don't think we're gonna fix any of those like where it's like ripping open. All right, what are we doing over here? We're gonna fix that plus sign. Your dad will do that one, that plus sign 
I'm done. Let me just uh, start down here and I'll work my way up. Boys will even get their pamphlets in this. They won't make any won't make any impression. I mean, I don't even think it would form a handprint. You could step on it right now, and you might get the tread off. Well, you would sink three inches though, which is weird. Yeah. I don't remember ever doing this until they changed that. No. But it wasn't any hotter. Tuesday and it was fine and um, and I even got half a percent retarder in this one makes no sense okay. it's good enough I'm glad it's mine we'll say that <laughs> I'd be a lot more disappointed if it was someone else's just paying me to do it Yeah, that looks much better. This is good. Got all the joints in. That's getting tight too. See, there's so many like, see all the waves from like, like dimpling or whatever? It's horrible. Like look at, that was awesome. oh my that was gosh. Whole, Can you grab me a float, dad? This whole pad, it's only this one. Float, wet it, yeah. Get two, you want me to do these over here? Yeah, this is really bad. I don't know if Fresno had chatter to it or what. I could but feel it moving up and down, but I mean, the Fresno shouldn't move that much. It's not going to move the concrete oh, that much. That <sighs> At least it's reachable. Give me a uh, steel trial, Dad. I have one. Yeah, give me a wet one. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do that from the other side too? It's not as bad on the other side, it doesn't look like it's hard to tell. I'll get that burn, please. I let it sit for 90 seconds here. Yeah, that, that's... Can we just push? Yeah, try it. You can see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks good. Good? Yeah, that's fine. Much better. This is still pretty wet. Can you uh, put that corner there one more time? So I can even hit it with the hammer. <laughs> Yeah, how horrible. I don't know what's going on with that. I even see a little one down here. Yeah, they're there and then one more pass and it looked like like right there or right here hmm. and then right there. Yeah, I've never seen that before. I couldn't feel it. I mean, I feel a little bit of chatter with the Fresno, but not that like it was, you could actually see uh, humps like that.
still really sticky and sandy. It's doing okay though. I can feel it really sticking to the broom though. Okay, well, that is a wrap on this one. So I'll still go through and uh, show the staining and the sealing process, but I think for now, at least the concrete's in. Uh, it came out okay. I'm actually um, not 100% satisfied with how this second pour came out. Just something was going on with the mix where it just did not want to seal right. Like the, the top was almost like ripping apart rather than bringing up any cream. So I'm not sure what causes that. We've definitely had that probably two or three other times in the last few years but you know it's kind of just a bummer uh that it happened here but i'm kind of glad it happened on mine uh if we were doing this for a customer i definitely wouldn't be satisfied with it but you know i can live with it uh it's just a driveway so um I, it's hard to tell in the video maybe i'll try to look back and see how how much detail it was showing but whenever you run your float across it it's almost like the surface has dried out and is hard but the underneath is still you know wet so uh you couldn't really get on it and when you try to float across it instead of sealing the surface it just rips it open and has like a bunch of cuts and almost looks like cottage cheese on the top because nothing wants to seal up properly so again i don't know what causes that but uh it's definitely a huge pain whenever you're trying to seal it and that happens so uh we'll get it done on the next one and i'll take you guys through some sealing and the staining process next but uh for now just got the sprinkler on it, trying to give this thing some water so it can uh, cure a little bit slower because it was about 85 today. And we will, I don't know, get this uh, get this sealed up and uh, you know let the boys ride bikes and be able to play on it a lot. So that's kind of the exciting part. So I will catch up with you guys in a couple of days or whenever I get a chance to stain and seal this. Thanks. Okay, well, uh, we are back again to stain the edges here and hopefully seal this concrete so took some time yesterday and just cleaned the whole surface so just pressure washed it kind of kicked off as many of those boogers as we could and we're ready to stain both of our center joints here which were 12 inches and then we have eight inches wide for our horizontals and then i just did this little detail to tie into our existing over here because i think it would have looked strange with the double line on this side and single on the other side so um, me walker here today we're gonna get this stained and i think just like the other patios i'm just using a little foam roller and this rock solid rust-oleum that i picked up from menards and i'm also going to be putting down some of this rapid set self-leveling black sealer for in between the joints so that'll basically just go in here where our expansion joints are to kind of seal those up and, and bring them up flush with the top that way uh, just improves the look I think and keeps water from going down there so let's get to it and we're gonna start rolling this on and we will check on this whenever we get the first two Okay, well, that was a lot of border to stain, so uh, my help is over there eating some snacks on the porch. So I was able to get this first coat down. You can see um, it's definitely splotchy, that first coat. I mean, it really sucks, soaks it up into the concrete, so a lot of light spots. So this second coat that I'm about to start now, it really goes a long way, and that's basically how the other one went too. I'm just gonna get the paintbrush, a regular brush instead of the roller, and get down into these creases here. That way I can make sure they're nice and uh, covered for when I put the caulking in there. It should cover it, but you know, might as well just throw a small coat on there. So I'm just gonna get started on this second coat and then we will see how it looks after that. Okay, well, here we go. We have our two coats down, really helps out, makes it a lot darker. 
evens everything out and it goes a lot faster to get that second coat on. Uh, I don't know if the camera caught this the other day, but this was <laughs> the most important part. Of course, we have a little Walker T uh, hand prints here and the date. So it kind of matches with the back. And I'm just getting ready to seal this and then I'll put the caulking down for the joints. So for the sealer, I'm going with this uh, V-Seal 102 Winter Guard. So this is specifically for broom finish concrete and it's pretty much the best thing we found for protecting against salt. So we have pretty bad salt around here on the roads. And even though I would never specifically salt my own concrete, anything that comes off of the vehicles from the road and then you park on this, uh, it's gonna start spalling and, and damaging the surface. So we're gonna get a nice, maybe two coats of this V-Seal and throw it in the sprayer here. Of course, uh, these sprayers, if you concrete guys are familiar with them, the seals really suck on these things. And the, you're supposed to be able to pump it up with this like one-way valve. But uh, mine failed a long time ago and I'm tired of buying seals for it. So I just rigged up this little uh, air coupler here and then I just uh, put some air pressure in it. The, the seal for the actual tank is still good, just not the pump itself. So, well, we'll get this... Uh, get this filled up get some pressure in there and we will seal this concrete all right so when you use this air compressor it really only takes a few psi you really don't want to be pumping this thing up like crazy so <laughs> we'll get our handle here ready to go and we'll disconnect it from this coupler like to do a nice random circular pattern seems like even when you do the back and forth it wants to leave some small streaks All right, coat number two. And that took almost all of that first three gallons or so. So we'll go a little bit less on this one. Okay, so that's two coats down. Really uh, starts to look like something. It's not a wet look or semi-gloss like the one for the stamp concrete would be, but should do a good job holding up. And now I'll just get the caulking in between our expansion joints and that should be it. Okay, last step. Just need to sealer in the joints. 
We'll use one tube first and see how it goes. I don't want to just lose it all down through the bottom of the crack, so I might have to put some silicone down first or something, and then this auto leveling filler. Seems like it's doing okay. Must be laying it on a little thick because I did about nine feet, so definitely gonna need a couple more cans of this. I think this is a 10 ounce, 10.1 fluid ounce. Yeah, so <laughs> these aren't cheap either. These are like nine dollars each, so kind of stinks, but it'll be nice to have. This is what I'm trying to avoid here is it's just going past the expansion and I don't want to fill up the whole crack there. I just want to fill up the top here. Of course, usually you put those foam backers in there, but I already have my expansion in, so I was hoping it would keep it from going all the way down. All right, I'm gonna let this one set up for a few minutes and probably use that last tube I have to cap it or I don't know maybe I'll just start on the next one might as well do that because I'm gonna have to buy more anyway what do you need help with my man okay well uh, other than putting some more caulking in those joints I think I'm gonna call this one done and I think it came out pretty nice like i said for that second pour really wasn't too happy with how the finish was with that concrete kind of like getting dry on the surface so i don't know if there's any of you guys have ever seen that or experienced that you know drop it down in the comments let me know how you handled it but uh it was almost like the surface evaporation rate was like way off and the surface itself was dry and solid but then like the lower four inches was still wet like if you pushed on it it was almost like the quicksand surface where this the top is kind of sticky but it was still like you could you know step on it and sink but very weird uh, that happened to us like twice last year too and I remember it being right around the time they changed the Portland in the mix so there was like a different type of Portland so I don't know maybe there's something going on with that and the mixture of the environmental stuff but we had poured our last two jobs similar temperatures similar humidity similar um, wind speeds and no issues just normal concrete easy to finish and of course it's really difficult when you can't work up any kind of cream from the surface and there's no bleed water coming up through so yeah let me know in the comments if you guys have ever had that um, and maybe we can uh, work on the mix or something and put in the mix to see if it'll uh, help it but either way uh, it works for me because you know this is still my driveway so I don't really care that much it'll serve its purpose We'll be able to park on here walker will have a nice little basketball court <laughs> eventually so um yeah i'm gonna get these last few joints in and i'm gonna call this one good so uh thanks for watching and i will see you guys on the next one